The 2020 U.S. political race is garnering more attention. How do you expect campaigning and the election to impact markets now and into 2020? We're pretty confident that in the end it will be won by a Democrat or a Republican. Uh, we've studied it and we think that's the way it should turn out. Uh, and uh, what we uh, tell people, and uh, this is in our second quarter review, is it is way too early to actually have any conclusive views about how this ball game plays. It, it just isn't really something where what goes on now means very much. And people get all excited about politics, they love to, but as it relates to capital markets, just kind of put it in your back. We, we believe that of the very many Democratic candidates that are running for the Democratic nomination, one will become the nominee. And exactly when that happens early next year, uh, first half, hard to know. Who will that be? Impossible at this point to know. Can you make a wild guess and you might be right? Yeah, but it'd be a wild guess and you're more likely wrong. And then uh, on the matchup of Republican versus Democrat as you move into the fall, the market isn't even going to begin to play with that for a long time. So there's no point in others worrying about it now. We're not going to worry about it now. We are going to worry about it later and we are going to be doing plenty more of these videos to be able to cover that at a later date when it's appropriate. And that's all I've got to say about that. You know, one of the things you do often see, particularly in an in a election like this, which has some parallels to what we saw in 2016 when you had so many Republican candidates, is that here we are you know, in the midst of the Democratic debates where we're having to have multiple debates, lots of candidates. Everybody's trying to get their polling numbers up. And so they're trying to find different ways to differentiate themselves. And often the way they do that is just by throwing a bunch of stuff against the wall and seeing what sticks. Um, and if they can find a new idea that sticks, maybe they can campaign on that and help their prospects. And so it is true here as we're in the midst of this many candidates campaigning and trying to um, figure out um, what's giving them the highest likelihood of winning is there's going to be a lot of wild proposals out there. And the market can react to those things in the short term. And so what I would simply say to people is don't assume that a lot of the ideas that you hear in the midst of a heated campaign like this with lots of different candidates are going to go on to be enacted into law. We're in a heavily gridlocked environment today where anything real controversial is going to be very hard to actually pass. You're going to hear a lot of those ideas. But what should also play out is that tied to that process that Ken highlighted, going from as many candidates as we have today, ultimately to one Democrat, one Republican, and then an ultimate winner, is that over the course of that period, political uncertainty falls. You go from lots of candidates with lots of ideas, pandering to their bases, to fewer candidates, to just two. Then you're in a national election and things tend to moderate there. And then you get a final winner. It doesn't even matter so much who it is. What matters is that you go through this process of higher uncertainty filtering down to less uncertainty. As that happens, people get more and more comfortable over time. They say, I didn't like what I was hearing before, but now I've got a clearer picture of what the candidate's real proposals are going to be. I've ultimately got a better sense of who the winner is. You know what the makeup of Congress is after the elections and what the actual likelihood of passing anything is. So you go through this process of high political uncertainty to lower political uncertainty. Stocks tend to benefit from that. You saw that in 2016, a wild political field uh, at the beginning of the year, right in the midst of a correction bottoming. And over the course of the year, even though the candidates were very controversial, you had that lessening of uncertainty, increasing confidence that ultimately led to a good 2016, good 2017. Uh, you'd expect that same process this time. A lot of proposals now leading down to much clearer picture of what can actually happen and that process should benefit stocks. But going back to what I said before, there is so much that people will read about this is likely to happen and that's likely to happen and this candidate's likely to be the nominee and oh, this is the sneaker that's gonna come out of nowhere and as it relates to capital markets, it's all fine if people are interested in that stuff, but as it relates to capital markets, that's just all spank. I mean, there's no there there. The fact of the matter is that all those proposals and all of this process is so far away from anything that the markets are prepared to pre-price now that as it relates to markets, people are better off just to put it aside. You want to watch it like it's a baseball game for the fun of the game, have at it. But as it relates to markets, it's just too early. Just kind of let it go.
and for views on current events in the world of investing, visit marketminder.com. Updated daily, it offers on-demand access to Fisher Investments' most current thoughts on capital markets and the global economy, as well as our sometimes irreverent commentary. We hope you will enjoy it.